Okay, folks, we're looking at the grade 12 test that was written by the pupils at King David. Let's start with question 1. Given that the equation 3x times x minus 2 equals 4, the first question they ask is determine the nature of the roots of this equation. Okay, now we all know that to find the nature of the roots, we need to investigate the value of the discriminant delta. Now remember, delta is b squared minus 4ac. To be able to do that, we need to get this equation into standard form. So we get 3x squared minus 6x minus 4 is naught. Now it's in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. And now we can apply the discriminant. So b squared minus 4ac is b is minus 6 squared is 36 minus 4 times a times the c value now remember that is a positive 16 that we get here plus 3 positive 16 and we times 16 by 3 we get the 48 so this is 36 plus 48 and that gives us a beautiful 84. Okay, now notice that 84 is not a perfect square. Okay, so what can we say? We can say delta is bigger than naught and it is not a perfect square. So what are the type of roots that we're going to have? We're going to have real, you can say real, or you can just say irrational roots. The key thing here is that the roots are definitely irrational because we stuck with no perfect square over here. Okay, then we continue. We say, now take that equation for five marks and solve it by completing the square. Okay, so let's see. We divide both sides by three here to get the leading term to be a one. So we get x squared minus 2x, and let's throw the 4 over, becomes 4 over 3. Remember, we're solving the equation, so I can throw the 4 to the other side. Now the step where I complete the square. I half the middle term, which is 1 then, and I square it, and I add it to both sides. Okay, so on the left-hand side, I've got x minus 1. All squared is equal to 3 over 3 plus 4 over 3 is 7 over 3. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, folks, please always read the instructions on your paper. The question paper said, give answers correct to two decimal places where appropriate. Okay? So, when we apply our, um, or use our calculator here, we have to absolutely um, give it to two decimal places. But, before that, the question paper said, this test consists of seven pages. It says non-programmable calculators here may be used for question five and six only. So this is where you can use your calculator, nowhere else. Okay, nowhere else can you use it. <coughs> so now I'm solving for x. What's left for me is to take the square root both sides. x minus 1 will then be plus or minus the root of 7 over 3. And that brings us to x equal 1 plus or minus the root of 7 over 3. And that gives you your 5 marks. You're not going to go beyond this. In other words, you're not going to put this into your calculator and get other values than the value that we have over here. Okay, that was for 8 easy marks, the beginning of the paper. Our second question was based on an exponential equation. The x's are in the power, okay, and we are requested to solve for x. So let's have a look. This here I can break up. That becomes 3 times 3 to the x minus 4 plus 1 over 3 to the positive x is equal to 0. Now, at this time, 
this point in time you can see there's a fraction here so you can get rid of the fraction by multiplying throughout or you can choose to substitute let k be equal to 3 to the power of x I think this is going to make your life much easier now just remember 3 to the power x is entirely positive it's never negative or zero so whatever k is it has to be positive so once you've plugged the k in which is what we're doing now minus 4 plus 1 over k and you solve for k any negative answer you may omit because it's an invalid answer okay so if I multiply throughout with k I get 3k squared minus 4k plus 1 which is 0 the factors of 3 and 1 that collectively give me 5 the signs are the same they're both negative I think we can see where this is going 3k and k 1 and 1 they are both prime numbers both signs are indeed negative so I get k is equal to a third for this part for the second part k is 1 <coughs> we weren't solving for k we were solving for 3 to the x so 3 to the x is equal then to 3 to the minus 1 which in this case means x is minus 1 okay and here 3 to the x is 1 and we all know that 1 is 3 to the naught so in this case x is equal to 0 so please folks you can see how I made it easier I broke my powers up made my negative powers positive the moment I saw what's going on here I introduced the K method and it made the problem much much easier let's go with question 2 question 3 for 5 marks says simplify ok so let's break it up again now remember if you simplify something it looks like this you have to use brackets so I'm going to say that 9 is 3 squared to the power of x plus this I'm going to break up into 3 to the power of 1 multiplied by 3 to the power of 2x that's finished in the bottom I've got 2 times 9 so 9 is 3 squared times the 2 gives me the 18 both those bases are raised to the power of x hence I have to use my brackets times 2 to the minus x plus 2 to the naught and 2 to the naught is 1 we all know that ok so now we can distribute here here we have 3 to the 2x plus 3 times 3 to the 2x in the denominator we have 2 to the x times 3 to the 2x times 2 to the minus x plus 1 now I'm sure you can see that if I add the two top ones together I'm going to get 4 of those 3 to the 2 x's the denominator the 2 to the x multiplied by the 2 to the minus x if I multiply like bases I add their powers so it's 2 to the naught which is 1 I'm left with 3 to the 2 x and that plus 1 tags along now you can surely see those two are going to say goodbye got 4 plus 1 and that gives me a result of 5 ok so things to watch out for if you prime your bases put them in brackets the laws apply to both here in that particular instance a times b to the m is a to the m times b to the m don't forget that if you have a to the m plus n like we had over here that comes from a to the m that was multiplied by a to the n so in a way I'm reversing my laws of exponents ok so that was a good 5 marks make sure you don't make silly errors the second part of the question was just for 2 marks we asked is it possible for this thing to ever be 0 now if you look at it it's a fraction number 1 ok and for a fraction to be naught its numerator has to be naught but in this case this whole thing here let me just get my pink pen this whole component here was the component that we had at the top 
without the plus one. Okay? And that component reduced to four after those two cancelled out. So if this thing, no matter what x is, this thing reduces to four. So is it possible to be zero? No. Since this expression reduces to 4 which is independent of x. The only thing that can make it 0 is if I choose things here that if I add them together gives me naught. This is a positive number. That is a positive number. This will always be positive. Can't be naught. Okay? So you could have either argued that it reduces to 4, or you could have said no, since 9 to the x is bigger than 0, and 3 to the 2x plus 1 is bigger than 0, thus the sum of these two things will always be bigger than 0, and can therefore not be 0. So one of the two answers got you full marks for that part. Okay, I hope that that makes sense. The fourth question was solving a third equation. Now let's have a look. This third equation is the root of x plus 3, which is equal to, if I throw the x over, 3 minus x. Now folks, I want you to watch me carefully. This is a question where we need to state restrictions. Underneath this root... I cannot have a negative number. So the number that's currently underneath the root is x plus 3. That can be naught, but it has to be positive. Okay? That's the first thing. So what does that mean for x? This means that x has to be big or equal to minus 3. Now, very important and just as important is the fact that there's an x on the right-hand side that can make this side negative. Why is that dangerous? Because there's a plus in front of the root. Okay? So what does that mean? It means that 3 minus x also can be naught but has to be positive. Else, if this is negative, this is an invalid equation. A positive number can never equal a negative. So both sides here has to carry a positive. What does it mean for x? Minus x is big and equal to minus 3. So x is smaller and equal to 3. Now, if I combine that, there's 3. Here's minus 3. Big and equal to minus 3 is a closed dot. Go to the right. Small and equal to 3, closed dot. Go to the left. And I can see that those two overlap. So my answer must lie between 3 and minus 3. <coughs> this is very important. Okay. So once we've solved this, we're just going to see, does our answer lie there? And if it doesn't, then we have to omit it. Okay, now the process can start. If I square both sides, the square root disappears. x plus 3 is equal to 3 minus x all squared. If I square that, I get x squared minus 6x plus 9. Okay, I put everything to the one side. I get x squared minus 7x. It's minus 6 minus that x. Plus 9 minus 3 is plus 6, which is naught. Signs the same, both negative. So the factors will be 6 and 1, a minus and a minus. This you should be able to do with your eyes closed now, the factoring step. Okay, so what do we get? We get that x is 1, or that x is 6. Now, folks, 6 lies to the right of 3. 1 lies in the middle there. So this answer here is not applicable. But why? Give me your reason. Since x is only allowed to lie between 3 and minus 3. So yes, it is a solution for that equation. But that wasn't the question. That was the initial question. Okay, so based on the restrictions on the initial question, this answer has to be omitted. The only answer that is true is 1. Now we've changed this mark allocation on the test to 6. Okay? The last algebra component is an extension of this particular sum. Let me get it out for us. 
and that is where we say part B. Now part B says hence or otherwise solve, let me just get that equation up there. Hence or otherwise solve this equation. Now we can see that as a plus and this is a minus. Okay, and that changes things a bit. If I look at this restriction, I get this into the form I want it in, x plus 3. Then I get x plus 3 is equal to x plus 3. Now that seems almost true always. But remember, here we have a root. Okay? So my restriction is still x bigger than equal to negative 3. On this side, positive, and underneath. Now, if I square both sides, I'm going to be lazy. x plus 3 squared equals, this is this side squared, is equal to x plus 3, which is this side squared. If I throw that over, I get x plus 3 squared minus this x plus 3 is naught. I remove the x plus 3 as a common factor. I'm left with x plus 3 plus 1, which is naught. And from that I get two answers. x is equal to negative 3 over here. And here, sorry, that's not a plus 1, that's a minus 1. Here I get x plus 3 minus 1, which is x equal to 2. Both of those answers are bigger than minus 3. And therefore, bigger or equal to rather, therefore both of them are part of the solution. And the solution indeed here is correct. Okay, so that takes care of the algebra section of this paper. And by the way, we changed that mark allocation to 2. Okay, I hope that that made sense to you and that you could see where you went wrong.